Hello 3D printing friends! Today on the BB3D channel we are going to install a PTFE guide tube in the extruder on our Sobol SV01 3D printer. Stick around and we'll get into it right after this. I'm Brian and you are watching BB3D. Hi, welcome back! Hey, if you're new here and you're wanting to learn about cool 3D printer upgrades, 3D modeling, and other 3D printing related stuff, Start now by subscribing and clicking the bell so you don't miss anything. Okay, so today we're going to install a PTFE guide tube in the extruder on the Sobol SV01 3D printer. And what this is going to do is make it much easier to feed flexible filaments such as TPU down into the hot end. See, right now, inside this beautiful Titan-style direct drive extruder with its 3 to 1 gear ratio, there's a filament guide right at the output side of those filament drive gears, and that directs the filament down into the hot end. But on a lot of SV01 printers, a crucial piece is missing. Inside that filament guide, there should be a very small length of PTFE tubing. It isn't very long, and its purpose is to make sure there's no wiggle room for the filament on its way into the heat sink of the V6 style hot end. Without this little bit of PTFE tubing in place, flexible filament can miss the opening into the heat sink, and you'll have to keep poking the filament into the extruder, trying to get it to feed into the hot end, or pull it out and bend it straight and try again. And even when you do get the flexible filament loaded, a print can fail if the filament bunches up in that extra space where the PTFE tube should be. Now, just so we're clear, the missing PTFE tube doesn't affect regular hard filament very much, but adding it certainly won't hurt. So, we're going to take the extruder apart, add that little bit of PTFE tubing where it needs to be, and then we're going to put it all back together, adjust the nozzle height relative to the bed, and then we can get back to printing. Before starting, we need to have a bit of PTFE tubing on hand, as well as either a razor blade or a thin utility knife, so you can cut the tubing flush with the guide. If you need some Bowden tubing or a utility knife, I've got links in the description to these on Amazon. There are links to plain, ordinary, generic PTFE tubing, and if you want the good stuff, there's a link to the Capricorn PTFE tubing, which is what I'm going to use. You'll also need the ball-end hex wrenches, which came with the SV01, or your favorite set of hex wrenches, I'm going with my favorite set here. Ball-end hex wrenches are like the greatest thing because you can drive a hex head screw without having to be in line with it, kind of like a universal joint. Oh, and you'll need a zip tie or two as well. And lastly, you'll want to have some kind of padding to put on the bed. If you drop the extruder assembly, you don't want to crack the glass. I'm going to use a small towel folded over for padding. This will also help if you drop a screw so it won't bounce too far away. Anyway, now that we've got everything that we need, let's get to it. We need to unload the filament because it'll keep us from disassembling the extruder. So let's heat the nozzle up to the working temperature of whatever's loaded. For me, this is going to be about 220 degrees C. Okay, with the nozzle up to temperature, we'll press the load lever and push just a little bit more filament through, and then pull the filament out. Pushing it down first ensures that you've got all the filament in the hot end kind of melted together, so you don't end up leaving a little blob of it behind when you pull it out. Now we can set the printer to cool down and wait until it's back down to a safe temperature. With the filament unloaded and the nozzle cooled down, turn off the printer. Let's put down the towel, or whatever you're using, as padding on the bed. As I mentioned earlier, this will help protect the glass build surface in case you drop a part on it, and it'll help keep dropped screws from bouncing too far away. Remove the three screws securing the part's cooling fan to the side of the hot end fan shroud. Set the fan around the back of the X gantry to keep it out of the way. Note that one of the screws is about a millimeter longer than the other two. This screw goes on the bottom of the parts cooling fan. It's longer because it also goes through the duct attached to the cooling fan. Remove the three screws securing the hot end fan shroud to the X carriage. Then set the fan shroud aside. Using your flush cutters, cut the zip tie securing the cable bundle to the X carriage. Remove the four screws securing the extruder assembly to the X carriage. Then unplug the cable from the extruder stepper motor. Remove the three screws securing the cover on the extruder feed assembly. Note that one of the screws is slightly shorter than the other two. The shorter screw is from the hole closest to the X carriage. 
Carefully remove the spring loading assembly, which keeps the filament loading lever pressed against the filament gears. You don't want that spring to pop out and go flying across the room or into your eye. Carefully unsnap the heatsink fan from the heatsink. That blue airflow guide is C-shaped and it just snaps on. Set the fan and the airflow guide over the back of the X gantry to keep it out of the way. Carefully remove the heatsink from the extruder assembly. You may need to twist it just a little. It's kind of held in place by friction from the filament guide right above it. Be careful of the wires for the heater cartridge and the thermistor. These can be fragile. Now look inside the filament guide. If you see PTFE tubing inside, you're good, then you can skip ahead to the reassembly portion of the video. If there's not a short length of PTFE tubing inside the filament guide, it's time to insert some now. Get your cap tubes or your regular PTFE tubing and make sure the end is cut square relative to the length of the tubing. Insert this end into the filament guide until it won't go in anymore. Then, keeping the PTFE tubing pressed into the filament guide, cut it flush with the end of the guide. Insert the heat sink into the extruder assembly. Keeping the heat sink aligned, insert the filament guide. You may need to rotate the heat sink ever so slightly to help everything seat into place. Then reinstall the spring loading assembly. And now we're going to reinstall the cover on the extruder feed assembly using the three screws. Remember the shorter screw goes toward the X carriage. Plug in the extruder stepper motor cable, taking care to route the cable as shown. Snap the heat sink fan back onto the heat sink. Attach the extruder assembly to the X carriage using the four screws. The ball end drivers are especially useful for the two lower screws. Reinstall the hot end fan shroud using the three screws. Be very careful to avoid pinching the wires as you're installing it. Reinstall the parts cooling fan. The longer of the three screws goes in the lower hole. Now, using a new zip tie, reattach the cable bundle to the X carriage. And then trim the zip tie. Now you can level or tram the bed depending on your choice of terminology. I like to use the phrase setting the minimum nozzle height. So that's all there is to it. Now you should have an easier time loading and using flexible filament. Before I did this, I had a couple of Calicat models fail when I was printing TPU because the filament had bunched up inside the extruder. Their ears are missing. But that doesn't happen now, and that makes me happy. I guess it's about time to wrap this up. Thanks for making it all the way to the end, and thanks for all the likes, comments, and shares. Now don't forget to subscribe and click the bell so you don't miss any cool 3D printing stuff. If you like this episode, please give it a thumbs up. If not, give it a thumbs down. But either way, please share your thoughts down in the comments. If you like the content I'm producing and you want to help out, check out the description for ways you can do that. Shopping using the Amazon affiliate link really helps no matter what you're buying. And heck, even just subscribing is a great way to support the channel and help keep me making these videos for you. Well, now that I'm able to get more reliable prints out of TPU, I'm going to go print something cool and flexible. You do the same, and I'll see you next time.